And so it is. Um, welcome to our second Go Challenge walkthrough. So, let's see, I'm going to post this one in chat. This came courtesy of Bryce. Given a list of numbers L, implement a method sum i j, which returns the sum from the sublist L i j, including i excluding j. For example, let me give us some examples here. You can assume that you can do some pre-processing. Some should be optimized over the pre-processing step. All right, I'll show you how I would approach breaking this one down. I got this from the like daily coding challenge email thing and apparently it was asked by Goldman Sachs. Well, there you go. It's good enough for them. Okay, so first I want to like, um, oh, the screen share. So first thing I want to do is kind of unpack some of this language. Because like, I don't know, this feels dense to me. It starts feeling like a math puzzle, and it's not a math puzzle, it's a programming problem. So I've got a list of numbers. That's one of the things they give me. They give me the I and J, that, those are indexes, looks like. So if it's an array with one, two, three, four, five, and we're passing one and three in, we get two and three because the first one is inclusive and the second one is exclusive. So those are, we get two indexes and the function's called sum and it takes in index one and index two does not take in the array, which is curious. So it's just a, a, expecting that array exists in scope somewhere. So now I would do the, um, I'll see. Hey Kyle, I assume you're writing something, but we just see your Slack. I heard it, I heard that, hang on. Shared the wrong stupid screen. Friday, right? Um, cool. So this is the thing I was writing. All right, other stuff I want to pull out of this problem. I, I, I don't quite know what this pre-processing shit is about, but we'll, uh, we'll figure that out as we go. So the first index is inclusive, second index is exclusive. That might come in handy at some point. Um, all right. What are the steps of the whiteboarding process? Everybody remember? It's repeat the question, input output table, try and solve the refactor. Call this reflect. It's not necessarily a refactor, but that's often what it is. And this is, repeating is often part of it, but we're trying to clarify, trying to understand the problem. So what I'm doing up there, L, I, J, like, and my, my brain doesn't work with shit like that. So I have to, understand the problem in my own terms a little bit. If I'm talking to somebody else, uh, I might be asking them some questions, uh, including like, 
is this is the list of numbers finite? Uh, does the list of numbers change? That comes up when you're working with like, all right, find all the tweets where, well, people are adding tweets like thousands of them every second. So does the list change as I'm doing this operation? So like, these are like clarifying questions you can ask. Um, but let's say we're doing something simple with this list. We get these two indexes. We don't have to, uh, you might ask like, do I have to validate that the indexes are legal? Am I, are, am I always going to be given a valid index? Am I gonna be given the string fart? Well, that's not valid. Am I gonna be given the integer negative one? That's not a valid index. Uh, and if I get five, are there going to be at least five indexes in the thing? These are like clarifying questions you wanna ask up front. Might ask, uh, cool, can I do this in any language I want? Uh, they go, sure, we don't give a shit. Or they might say pseudocode it, don't write it in a language. Um, all those totally valid. So that's my clarifying the what and the why. The IO table, this is gonna give us some examples and they gave us one in the problem. So if L is one, two, three, four, five, then if I give it two and three, or no, one and three, if they wanted. So if I give it one and three, it should return See, this is another clarifying question. Does it give me back five or does it give me back whatever the value is? Returns the sum from the sub list. Okay, so that means I get back five from that. Uh, I also want to think of like a, a degenerate case. That's usually a good one to start with. A degenerate case is the one where it basically does nothing or as little as possible. Uh, Mike asks, what does it mean by sublist? So if this is a list, a sublist is either this list or something smaller. So uh, one, two, three, four is a sublist. One is a sublist. One, two, three, four, five is also a sublist of this. But at, uh, it is at most this and made exclusively of things that are in here. Could also be two, three, four. That's, those are sub lists uh, of this. Good question. So if I give this zero and zero, it should just give me back one. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four. If I do four and four, it should give me five. And then I'm also going to do zero and four, which should add all of them. So that's three, six, 10, 15. So those are, those are gonna be my examples. And if I'm doing this in an interview, then I am confirming like, all right, just so we're all on the same page, with these inputs, I get these outputs. You even ask like, are there any cases you, you think I'm not considering? Uh, these are, but this is gonna be our, our guide on this. So for our, so this is the IO table. Step three, we're gonna start working on solving this. So if I'm doing this on the whiteboard, yeah. Sorry, man. Can, is there any way we can go back to clarifying the question? Yeah. Um, just to make sure we understand. So, so what is I and J exactly supposed to represent here? Indexes. Okay, so two separate indexes. So it's saying right. at one and three, 
So one and three would be two, and I can't see it right now, but, and four. So wouldn't the sum of two and four be six? Why is it coming out to five? No, because it's a sub list that's inclusive on this end and exclusive on this end. So what that would look like is one and three gives me that. Oh. That. Because it's including this and up to, but not including this. Got it. Hey, Kyle. Um, I don't know what's in that box to the um, right of your input output, but for me, it's just like a black box. What about this? Uh, I don't see that at all. I think it's your chat or your recording software, probably, I've always assumed. That? No, not that. <laughs> this? I don't. Now it's gone. Okay. Uh, it was probably the chat window. Um, cool. Can you see uh, the input output table? OK. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions hey, about, Kyle? yeah. Um, so on that last input output, wouldn't this be inclusive of the four? I guess I'm oh. saying, yeah, the Good fourth catch. index is the five. So that wouldn't Good. be added. Very nice. So yeah, we wouldn't have that last one in there. That means it's always going to exclude something. That's kind of weird. So one, two, three, four. Or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it would exclude that. That's exactly why we do this stuff. So that should be actually three, six, ten. Now we'll deal with a special case uh, where we're like, all right, well then how would I sum all of them? I've got an idea for that, but we'll get that to that in a sec. Other questions about clarifying or input output? So like where, like what are the words that make you know that it's not gonna include, like it's up to that point? Sure. In the description, it said, given a list of numbers L, implement a method sum IJ, which returns the sum from the sublist LIJ, including I excluding J. And then they give an example of what that would look like. And so is I and J just indexes? Indexes. I think the preprocessing that that refers to that you can actually um edit the matrix. I mean the array, right? I don't think so. I think what they mean is you could like prepare sums in advance. It's like this is only five numbers. What if it's a billion numbers? Then you could have like pre-made sums for like the first million numbers. So if uh, the range you uh, pass in includes those rather than add them all up every time. Pre-processing would be like, cool, well, just give me that sum right off the bat. That's how I read that. I might be wrong. So to include the whole array, you would use negative numbers? Is that how that would work? Ah, so. That's not in our input output table right now. Um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you what I would do with that because we'll probably have to do the implementation a little bit different if we wanna be able to have all of the numbers. But they didn't specify. What else?
Cool. So if I get to code this, uh, this is going to be um, array summer. All right, nothing up this sleeve, nothing up this sleeve. Um, if I'm just doing general programming, Node is generally kind of my go-to language. So I'm going to make an empty Node project. Uh, I'm going to install Mo. No, I'm going to just. And then I'm going to write some tests for this. Um, this will speed up this problem solving process because I can take that input output table and then just make those tests. Hey Kyle, do you find that a lot of these are like intentionally written to confuse you? Yes. Either that or they're like written to sound super academic. Like I'm convinced that a lot of these were written very normally and they go, oh no, but what if the person we're interviewing like gets mad about how we how dumb we sound? And then they try to sound as smart as as professorial as possible. I'm like, oh yeah, this is absolutely how we how we ordinarily talk. Um so I think that ends up being part of it too. All right, so I've got Jest in there. I'm going to make an index.js file. I'm going to make a test folder. And I'm going to make a test called index.js. And I'm going to make a test command. So this will be just watch all and cool. So if I npm test, should tell me I don't have any tests. Beautiful. All right, we're in good shape. I'm going to split this window. And I'm going to run that uh, test command over here. Cool. And over here, I'm going to have my spec over here and my uh, Drupal script file over here. Now, um, if you get a chance to code a solution like this, like instead of whiteboarding it, for example, that's a real good chance to show off your dev workflow. Um, so just a thing to keep in mind. Do you, do you use, you know, linting, whatever, which reminds me, I should probably throw a linter on. I'm going to install ESLint. And then I'm going to uh, npx eslint init. Uh, oops, work. I'm not using, I'm going to use require. No framework, no TypeScript. Oops, crap, I did it again. Come on, Kyle, get it together. Common JS. Um, no framework, no TypeScript, runs in Node, but not the browser. I would like to use a popular style guide. How about Airbnb? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right, neat. So I'll restart my editor 
and I'm going to start writing some tests. So I'm going to write a describe or sum. And um, first example is, uh, I'm going to use the degenerate one that's zero and zero. It should um, return uh, the first number when given the indexes zero and zero. And I can say that I expect sum zero and zero to equal uh, what do I say? Five. Nope, one. All right. So that failed. Let's say ES went global. Describe and it. I think that's how you do that. Yes, Lent set globals. Per There it is. All right, neat. So now it's telling me sum is not defined. You're goddamn right it's not. So let's require it in. All right. Now what's your problem? It's not a function. You're not a function. Expect also. So I go over to this index file and I module.exports the sum function. All right, now what? Well, it's a function, but it's returning undefined and it's expecting one. Cool. Now it's passing. So um, it's just a, a test-driven development philosophy kind of thing. Anybody, what's the value of hard coding this to get to green? Why would I do that? As a check to make sure your your um, testing is set up. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. What other things am I getting out of this? Do you know the test is working for the value that you want it to work for? Yeah, it works in at least one case. That's good. Also, that helped me get all this stuff set up. I have an idea of like how this function is supposed to look it takes in integers as arguments and it returns a thing. Like it, that's actually a lot more valuable than it appears on the surface. Okay, so now we throw in another test. Should return the penultimate number. Well, no, it should give you the last number. Given the index is four, and four. So if I do that, I should get five, which is what it said in my input output table. Cool. 
Um, you can throw the rest of them in here too. It should uh, return the sum of the sub array when given the indexes one and three. Uh, which was five. And lastly, it should return the sum of all but the last number and given the indexes zero and four. So that should equal 10. All right, if I can get all of those to pass, I have implemented this function correctly. So let's, uh, let's narrow this down. I'm gonna skip these for right now. Get back to my passing green test. So one of the things I'm gonna need in here is that list. Okay, I'm still green. Now watch this. I take that hard coded one. And now it's still passing. It's not hard coded anymore. All right. Uh, I'll call this lower bound, upper bound. Okay. Now what if that becomes lower bound? Well, shit, now it's green and I'm like, I kind of have some of the logic there already. This is one of the ways we creep towards solutions. Um, all right. Well, like my next idea is like, I know I'm gonna have to make sub lists at some point. So I could do something like, um, that seems like actually a good thing to make into another function. So uh, if I describe get sub list, that's probably gonna be most of the logic of this problem. It's just everything but the summing. But think about what that's doing. That's taking this problem and making it this problem. I've still made the problem smaller. And I'll know that that works. Um, and it, it should return the uh, first element of an array as a sublist when given indexes zero and zero. So it's similar to that test up top, it just doesn't do as much, which is good. It's decomposing our problem. We'll call that get sub list zero and zero to equal something like that. I'm also going to say, just to clean up this API. Um, I, I, I think it's sloppy as fuck that in the prompt they're just expecting this list to exist in the environment. So we can do better than that. Let's, let's pass the list in as an argument also. 
All right, so it says get sublist is not defined. All right. So let's get sublist. All right. So make this get sublist function that takes in the list, a lower bound and an upper bound. And then I'm gonna skip all of these and see what it's saying. Expected back one got undefined. Okay, can I get that uh, by returning list at lower bound? Oop. Okay, looking good there. Looking good there. Invoke it with that list, zero and zero. Ah, received zero, expected that. Ah, I see. So it gave me the value back at that. Um, so if I do whatever that. Cool, now I got a green test passing. I can make it pass for real if I just return the list. And yep, we're passing. So now we want something where we give it, maybe the list has two things. It returns the first Ellen array when given index is zero, zero, and a list of two things. So if I make that a little bit longer, all right, well now it doesn't pass anymore. So I could use some of my built-ins. I've got a slice and splice available to me. I think I even used this as an example the other day of like two JavaScript APIs. I cannot remember to save my life because it's stupid. I don't remember which one's which. JS slice. Returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array object. Okay. Array splice. Changes the contents of an array by removing or replacing existing elements. Okay, we want slice. So slice takes in, hey, what do you know? An upper and a lower bound. So I should be able to slice that. Now let's see what happens if I just put these in. What if I do that? All right, and that got it to pass. I got both of them to pass. All right, I have a hunch that's not gonna stay that way uh, for very long. <laughs> oh, and the, my linter is mad at me because I'm calling this list and we have this thing over here. Maybe we'll call that given list. Cool. And I want this at the end. Okay. Uh, and that one's just mad because we're not using upper bound yet.
Okay, okay. Now I know that that's not going to keep working. So let's keep coming up with an example with more examples where uh, it, it won't do what we think. So this has three things in it, and I ask for zero through one. I should still only get back the first element. So it should return the first element of the sublist. X is one and one, and a list of three things is given. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. So now we have a failing test. So what I could do to make that test pass. I just did a comparison where I say uh, if lower bound is the same as upper bound, then do that. Otherwise, maybe not the plus one. Did that pass? Hey, oh, I think it did. Passing. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So it's called red green refactor. So we got this passing, but this code doesn't look so great. Lots of repetition in it. So now we figure out how can I clean this up? The only thing that isn't being repeated is that second. Um, that second value. So what if I did let real upper bound uh, equal zero, and then this becomes real uh, upper bound equals upper bound. We'll say plus equals one, and then just assign that to whatever it starts as. And then this becomes real upper bound. Cool, and we're passing again. We got rid of some of that repetition. I still don't know if I love this code, but baby steps. So let's see. Have that I this might so if I was running go or something like that I'd leave it like this I'm always trying to see if I can cram more uh, things into one line in JavaScript which is probably a bad idea what if I put that in an expression in here and ternary it the lower bound upper bound. If that's true, it's upper bound plus one. Otherwise, it's upper bound. And then I can get rid of all of that. That's actually not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe if I do something like that. That's not fucking bad. Yeah, I'm gonna roll with that. Cool, so um, one more test I think will give me the confidence that I need that this thing works the way that I think it does. So I'm still not like actually confident. If I give it a list of five things and I give it the indexes zero and four, uh, it should return the first four elements. So if I give it one, two, three, four, five, and I give it zero and four, I should end up with something like that. And it passes. Yay. So I, uh, I feel pretty good about my git sublist function now. So now I'm going to go back up 
Go back to running this first test here. It passes, cool. So now what if this thing, uh, gets a sublist and we're going to pass in list lower bound and upper bound and then here we're going to reduce that array and uh, we'll say that it takes sum plus equals number. All right, some didn't like about that. Sum is already in scope. Yeah, you're telling me, dude. All right, maybe we get a little bit less clever with this syntax. Arrow function should not return assignment. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, and it wants this thing to be first. I got pass and test. That's heartening, even if my uh, my linter is mad at me. Uh, so what if I just get rid of this? Just returns. There we go. Is this sum? Um, oh, it's because the thing is the function's called sum. All right, now my linter's happy. My tests are passing. It's a beautiful day. So moment of truth. If I uncomment out that test, it passes. If I uncomment out that test, it passes. And if I uncomment out that test, it passes. So my answer to the actual prompt. Given a list of numbers L, so here's our list, implement a method sum i j, there's sum, there's i, there's j. Uh, okay, so actually pause real quick. I did, I just did step three, I worked the problem. Part of what I'm doing right now is the reflection. Uh, so returns the sum from the sublist L I J. All right, so I'm getting the sublist here, including I, excluding J. We handled that with this ternary. Um, we made their example work. We assumed that we could do some pre-processing. Yeah, all right. And some should be optimized over the pre-processing step. So uh, also part of the reflection, well, they only gave us five numbers. So we did this with five numbers. Now, if we were doing this with a million numbers, a billion numbers, then what I would probably do to optimize this in that pre-processing step is, um, this is one that lends itself super well to a technique called memoization. How memoization works is, um, you, if I, if I call this like get sublist function, or if I call this sum function with the same values, I get the same result, right? If I call a uh, sum with zero and four, I don't get one value on Monday and a different value on Tuesday, but the same list, I always get the same shit. So the magic trick there is to um, 
store the result of that calculation instead of doing the calculation, or in addition to doing the calculation. So the first time sum gets called one and three, I store the result of sum one and three, like in an object. I can actually store it on the function itself. And then the next time somebody asks for sum one and three, instead of doing the calculation, I just look up to see if I've ever done it before. And if I have that, I give it back. That's one of the ways that you can radically speed up these functions because every time it gets called, your function gets smarter and starts running more efficiently because it can look up calculations it's done before. The trade-off there is you need to store the results of all those calculations and that can certainly get mighty large. Um, but in the absence of more information, that's probably the first tool that I would reach for. And that is a reflection. Cool. Questions? Can I see the code again? Yeah. If they were like really insistent on just jamming this all into one thing, the other thing I could do would probably still make this work. So if this is our, this is my implementation I like. Uh, I can I can make this worse by doing something like this. Cool, and hey, check it out, my test still pass. If I gotta do an all in one stupid function, it would probably look like that. Something that'll come up on these interviews sometimes is they go, oh, psych, you don't get, you don't get a slice. That's cheating. Okay, no problem. So just write your own slice. You go through this exact same process. If I was given an array and two numbers. How do I loop through that to get all of the values of all the indexes in between those? And where do you start? Where do you stop? That's all slice does. All right, so they don't let you use JavaScript slice? Well, Jerome. Anything else? Cool. Stand by for surveys. Thank you very much. <laughs>